You've probably heard of Bun, the new JavaScript runtime and toolchain that hit the shelves a couple of weeks ago. It's been making quite a stir because of its incredible performance, and I finally had a chance to check it out this week. So in this video, I'm going to share some of my initial impressions of Bun with you. I guess we should start with the obvious thing, Bun's speed. Right now, the main feature of Bun is that whether you're installing dependencies or running JavaScript, Bun outruns Node and Dino pretty handily. You'll find a lot of great videos here on YouTube that show Bun's speed as a web server and I'll link to one of those up above. But I'm going to do a different kind of test here. We're going to test some of the more basic operations, just running it locally on my machine. And I'm going to show you a pretty handy tool that I like to use for this type of benchmarking. So let's take a look. I've got a directory here with a couple of different scripts that we're going to use to test Bun's performance. Let's take a look at the first one which is fibjs. This is an incredibly basic script. We've got a Fibonacci function here, and we're gonna calculate fib of 40. Now this type of script takes a couple of seconds to run, so it'll be a great way to test the performance of Node, Dino, and Bun against each other. Now, what type of tool will we use for this? I like a tool called Hyperfine, which is written in Rust and is incredibly simple to use. All we have to do is pass a couple of command strings as arguments to Hyperfine, and it will run those commands and give us some statistical results. So for example, well, here we can say a node fib.js. So that's how we call it in node. In bun, we can do bun run fib.js. And in Dino, we can do the same thing. Dino run fib.js. All right, let's kick that off. And we can see that right away, Hyperfine begins benchmarking these commands. This takes a couple of seconds to run, but after it's done, we can see the results. Now you'll notice we have some warnings here, statistical outliers detected. The recommendation here is to consider rerunning this benchmark on a quiet PC. Unfortunately, I'm running as little as possible right now. I do need to run OBS to capture the screen, of course. Uh, so we're gonna have to deal with that for now. But you can see we've got uh, some really nice output here. For each one of our scripts, we can see the time it took to run, plus or minus a standard deviation. And then we can see the full range and of course, the number of runs that were done. But then we do get a summary at the bottom and we can see Bun ran our script about one and a half times faster than Dino and 1.6 or 1.7 ish times faster than Node. Just doing some normal math, Bun is definitely faster, but we can give it some other tests as well. What about uh, testing an HTTP request? And here's the script we're gonna use for this one. As you can see, we've got this URL that just hits a weather API, and then we're gonna loop five times and make the request for that data. Uh, and as you can see, we're just gonna pull out the condition and the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit and print that out to the console. But the real test here is going to be of fetch. Of course, Bun comes with fetch support. Node added it, I think in Node 17, and I'm running Node 18 here. And then Dino also has fetch support. So we should be able to get an idea for performance performance on how all three of these runtimes make an HTTP request. Hyperfine again, and we'll start with node request.js, and then we can do Dino. Now, when we do a Dino run, we need to say allow net, so the Dino will allow HTTP requests through. And then finally, we can do bun run request.js. And let's see what these results are. Again, we've got some warnings. We're gonna have to ignore those for now, but overall, we can see that bun was the fastest. Now, it only beat out Dino by 1%. It's pretty neck and neck with Dino. And I've run this test a bunch of times, and sometimes Dino does win. So I would say bun and Dino pretty close on this one. Of course, Node is a little bit slower. Looks like Bun is about 26% faster than Node. So we've covered some basic math operations and now HTTP requests as well. What about parsing JSON and reading and writing from the file system? Well, we have a script for that as well. And I have two versions of this script. Let's look at the JSON dot node version of the script. This of course uses the standard node uh, file system module. And as you can see here, what we're doing is we're looping 70 times and we're adding keys to this object here. And to give ourselves some variation, I've got some functions. We're just looping over this functions array where we're either gonna insert a Boolean, a number, a string, or a nested clone into the value of whatever key that we're working with here. And then every time we send a key, we're gonna write the file out to the file system. And of course, that means we have to do a JSON stringify. And then we're gonna read that data back using a read file sync, and then we'll have to parse that and we'll reassign it to the object. So we're gonna do a bunch of reads, writes, stringifies and parses, and we're gonna see how Node and Bun do this. I didn't try and do this one in Dino. I'm not as familiar with Dino, but that's okay. We're gonna do this with Node and 
bun. Now, if you've read the bun docs, you know the bun has some of its own special methods for doing reading and writing of files. And that's where the json.bun file that I have comes in. This one is going to use bun.write and bun.file to read and write from these files. So we're going to do a couple of tests here. Let's start with the standard node file system module in node, of course, and we'll use the port of that on the bun side as well. Node json.node.js and then of course bun run json.node.js. All right, and we can see the bun is faster than node by about 11%. That's pretty cool, but how about the bun specific APIs? Maybe this time let's add one more to this and we'll do bun run json.bun.js. All right, we've got some surprising results here. So the fastest one was bun running the node version. So file read sync, file write sync. It beat out the bun specific commands by about 3%. And then of course it beat node running the node commands by 12%. So that's kind of an interesting result. I expected bun to be faster running its own commands. And I imagine if we run this again, which maybe I'll do just for fun and we'll take out the node running node one, we will probably see some variation there. Overall, bun is much faster than node in both of these cases anyway, and I'm sure in future releases, bun will perform some of these operations even more quickly. And uh, wow, that's pretty consistent. Once again, bun running the file read sync beats it out by about 3%. I should mention that I'm running all of this on an Apple M1 Max chip. Maybe on an Intel machine, these commands would run a little bit differently. But that is a quick look at some performance numbers for bun. Of course, overall, bun way faster than node and Dino in almost every every case, and there are other benchmarks you can look at on the Node website as well. One of my complaints about Bun right now, and this is just a factor of how new it is, is the toolchain support. It's supposed to be an all-in-one, both runtime and toolchain. However, some of the tools are not great right now. Let me show you what I mean. I've got a TypeScript version of our Fibonacci script here. Of course, you can see it takes a number and returns a number, but I'm making some function calls here, calling it with an array, calling it with a string, and then maybe at the end, we could actually call it with a number. Now, if we were to use TS node to compile this and then run it, we would of course expect it not to compile because of these errors. However, bun doesn't really work that way. If we do bun run fib.ts, you're going to see that it actually does try and run something, but we get this maximum call stack size exceeded error. It doesn't notice that there's a problem with our TypeScript, even though it's meant to run TypeScript natively. But to its credit, bun is already trying to fix these type of things. If we were to call some function that doesn't exist, a couple of days ago, bun would just skip that function call altogether. If I run this now, we are getting a reference error. It's a really cool project, and I'm definitely going to be watching it closely and playing with it on the side. It does seem a little undercooked at the moment, but that's fine. That's where something like this starts. I'm really excited to see what this does for the JavaScript ecosystem. If you've been playing with bun, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comments. If you found this useful, give it a like, and thanks for watching. Why, thank you. Yes, it is a new haircut.